Um, Jim has been uh, automating uh, built and release workflows and managing infrastructure for the past 15 years. He's now part of uh, Meltwaters Foundation mission, uh, building software services for Meltwaters development teams. And tonight he's presenting his talk, which, which is again monitoring your Kubernetes endpoint with Black Box Exporter. Welcome, Jim. So yeah, today I'm going to talk about monitoring Kubernetes endpoints with Prometheus Black Box Exporter. So I want to share um, our experience with running the Black Box Exporter um, within Kubernetes uh, to provide an internal endpoint probing service for um, our Meltwater teams in our Kubernetes cluster. So I hope everyone has some interest and in hopefully some basic knowledge around Prometheus and uh, Kubernetes. Uh, so this is a bit about me. I'm a principal software engineer at Meltwater. I've been here just over six years now. And I'm in somewhere in the middle of this map of New England uh, in New Hampshire in the US. And if you want to find me, uh, I'm on Twitter and GitHub. So Meltwater, um, a lot of people I'm sure don't know what we're all about, but we're a global company. Um, we have over 30,000 clients in 121 countries. We have over 60 offices in 27 countries. Um, uh, from the engineering side of it, that's uh, probably about 300 employees. Um, and, and we're in something like 30 offices, I want to say. Um, so we have a global uh, organization and everything that comes along with that. So uh, struggles with time zones, communication, um, and every, all the good that comes with it, uh, having being able to work with people from all over the world. Um, it's pretty exciting. So Meltwater uh, services that we provide, um, we do things around online media monitoring, uh, public relations, analytics and reporting, uh, social media, dashboard analytics. And if any of that sounds interesting, you can learn more at meltwater.com. So the foundation mission, uh, which I'm a part of, uh, we are an internal mission of two teams. And basically, our <clears throat> Meltwater engineers are our customers. So our mission statement is we enable teams to accelerate without thinking too much about the infrastructure, allowing a rapid path from ideation to prototype to providing business value. So we run um, quite a few services, each of our teams. So we're one team on our team on the left. and uh, we're in North America, and then we have another team in Europe, uh, which provides some of the services on the right. So uh, we are two. We are the same mission. We're two different teams. Uh, we have clear um, ownership over our services. So uh, you know we have we can move fast um, and uh, do what we think is right. But we do work uh, closely to make sure that our services work well together, um, and it's a good experience for our customers, the engineers. So we, we offer some services around AWS and consolidated billing, best practices around Terraform, um, CI, CD, uh, a lot of metrics, uh, Prometheus and Grafana being two. And then the team in Europe is doing um, a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, they're responsible for things like service mesh with Istio, and they actually run an entire logging backend with uh, Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. So today I'm gonna to focus on these three. So Prometheus, Grafana, and Kubernetes. So I'm hoping that if, hoping I can show that if you're already running these services, which I hope a lot of you are because they work so well together, um, adding a probe monitoring service is minimal effort with uh, the black box exporter. So this year, more than ever, saving money has been extremely important. Uh, so that it, we are always uh, looking for ways to save money by running services either ourselves um, or by purchasing third-party services uh, when it makes sense. So um, yeah, we're always on the lookout for ways to save money with our engineers. Uh, so uh, water engineers um, have a high level of autonomy. So they are not forced into solutions most of the time, they can choose what fits best for their use cases, for their applications. Um, and here's a sampling of some that I could think of at the time. Uh, this is just a small subset of everything that we, everything that we're using. But so some of these we uh, compete with 
either partially, um, some, but some we don't compete with at all. Uh, others we compete very directly with. Uh, so things like Ops Genie for alerting, um, Travis and Circle CI, some teams use for um, you know, continuous integration. Uh, we offer a, a service that competes directly with that and, that, and has been pretty successful um, reducing the cost of those. And um, yeah, and so then we have other services like GitHub that we don't try to compete with at all. Um, MongoDB Atlas is another service we have no interest in competing with. Um, they all, you know, those are all good examples of services that uh, they do what they do very well. And there's no need for us to try and uh, do something on our own. But let's talk about Datadog. So Datadog is a fantastic service. Um, they do a lot of things very well. Um, but with a strong service comes a high price tag. So we offer multiple services that compete with Datadog, such as logging, metrics, and we're always asking teams that continue to use Datadog uh, why they've chosen th uh, those tools over ours and to see if we can improve our services and hopefully try to convince them to switch if possible. So one service that Datadog provides that multiple teams use that uh, we actually used as well um, is Datadog Synthetics. So this is a service that will probe your services and tell you how uh, the latency is, you know, how, resp how responsive it is um, from multiple locations around the globe if you want. Um, so we thought this would be a good candidate uh, where we could offer something worthwhile. Uh, so the pricing for this is five US dollars per 10,000 checks per month. That might seem like a lot, um, but if you ran a check every minute uh, for an entire month, that would be over 40,000 checks. And that comes out to around 21 US dollars per month. Um, and we actually even think that's not frequent enough. Most of our teams feel the same way too. They would rather have at least 30 seconds. So um, if you could run a check every 30 seconds through Datadog uh, from two regions would cost you roughly $84 US. Um, and then that's just one of your potential services and likely you'll have many. So. For, for just us, uh, it was well over $1,000 uh, a month to run this uh, or to use this service. Um, so start talking about uh, how we replaced or how we are providing the service that replaces uh, Datadog Synthetics. So Prometheus, um, hopefully you have some experience or exposure to how Prometheus works, but basically Prometheus, uh, you give it endpoints that return Prometheus metrics, um, and it will go and scrape those uh, endpoints on you know, the, the interval that you've set. And so this is uh, pull-based monitoring rather uh, than push-based monitoring, which is a totally different set of potential tools that would do that for you. Prometheus uh, is, is not in that area. So it, what would happen is Prometheus would um, go off and hit usually some kind of exporter uh, or can be an exporter. You can also build metrics uh, endpoints into your services that return Prometheus formatted metrics. But um, if, for services that don't uh, can't do that, you will usually have an exporter. So like if you want to get Prometheus metrics for a MySQL database, there's a MySQL exporter that you can put in between and, and then you'll get metrics that way. Um, so Blackbox is just another kind of exporter with a little bit of a twist where you tell Blackbox uh, the endpoint that you want, or the target you wanted to hit. Uh, and it so it goes off and hits that target for you. Uh, you get a result back, Blackbox then gets some uh, Prometheus formatted metrics and then pa passes that back as uh, the scrape result. So let's start looking at the configs that would make this work. So here's a very basic uh, Prometheus YAML. This is uh, something that would just scrape itself. Um, Prometheus has its own metrics endpoint at, at 9090 um, slash metrics. And slash metrics is always the default. Um, and then here's an, a case where we have two hosts that uh, are running node exporter, which is another kind of exporter, which gives you uh, host level metrics 
So in a simple world where you have uh, a static uh, list of hosts, um, works just fine with simple config like this. Um, but let's start getting more interesting and more complex with uh, a fun black box config. So this is uh, a config example that Blackbox provides in its readme. Um, this would work. Uh, you would put this in your Prometheus config along with your scrape configs. It would, um, it would work if you were running Prometheus on the same machine as Blackbox because it's hitting localhost. So if you had um, a few static targets that you wanted Blackbox to, or you wanted Prometheus to probe through Blackbox, um, in this case, Prometheus.io and an example.com and a specific port 8080. Uh, this will work just fine. Um, it will use a module, which is something we'll see that's inside the black box config. And in this case, that module is just called HTTP2XX. Um, and down at the bottom, I've put the, the resulting URLs that are generated and actually hit by Prometheus. So hopefully you can put the pieces together to see that uh, that's how the, what, what comes out of this is these uh, new endpoints that are being effectively scraped. So instead of just having a host and a port slash metrics, um, we've got a bunch more uh, arguments that are getting passed to Blackbox to tell Blackbox what to go scrape uh, or what to go probe and, and then come back with uh, and return metrics. So um, static configs, as we had in the last couple of slides, they're very impractical in the real world. You're, most likely going to have in, in the cloud world instances coming and going, endpoints coming and going, um, and there's no real use for static configs most of the time. So um, Prometheus, uh, thankfully Prometheus uh, provides multiple service discovery methods, um, including Kubernetes. So Prometheus. Um, can get metadata back from the API and, and do a bunch of extra things with it. So I was gonna show briefly the very long list of um, scrape, or sorry, the service discovery methods and, uh, and other configuration options that Prometheus provides. So in here you can see all kinds of different capabilities. Uh, if you look for Kubernetes, that's Kubernetes SD config. Um, this allows retrieving scrape targets from Kubernetes REST API and always staying synchronized with the cluster state. So as, you know, as uh, nodes are coming and going, as ingress uh, uh, definitions are coming and going and services and pods and all of that, it's your, constant, your cluster is con constantly changing and Prometheus can keep up with it uh, thanks to service discovery. So, this um, example here is actually from the official uh, example from Prometheus, where uh, it's using that capability along with Blackbox. Uh, in this case, Blackbox wouldn't be running uh, on localhost, it would be somewhere else probably. So it's an example URL like blackboxexporter.example.com, can be anywhere. Um, so in this case, it would be using the service role uh, to find services and then automatically uh, starts start uh, probing those through Blackbox. So I had mentioned before that um, Blackbox has modules. So Blackbox is just a simple Docker container, very easy to run in Kubernetes. Um, these are some of the configs that you get for free that it comes with uh, by default. Uh, so we, where we saw HTTP to XX in a previous slide, that's where this comes from. Uh, so black box modules uh, support multiple prober methods, uh, HTTP, TCP, ICMP, um, DNS. And so you, that's where all that um, gets defined. So, uh, and this is also, if you had any kind of authentication or it, it would happen in here in a module. Um, these modules can get very complex uh, depending on what your needs are for your application. So you may have an application uh, with an endpoint that returns JSON. You want to make sure that it always uh, you know, has a certain field within that JSON that gets returned. Something like that would be very possible. Or if you always wanted to 
make sure you get a certain HTTP response. Um, it gets gets pretty uh, complex, pretty powerful. Um, but in these examples, I'm, I'm just going to focus on some simple examples, which actually this is all we support in our service at the moment. But we are hoping to offer uh, the more complex options in the future to our teams. So um, this is not something that we uh, just turn on for everything in the cluster. We don't want to just go probe every single service, every single pod. Uh, we want teams to opt in to the service. So uh, we do that by uh, looking for an annotation uh, at each level. So um, as long as um, it, this could be a deployment as in the top example, but it could also be a stateful set or a, you know, a, a whatever else is uh, supported by your cluster. As long as the pod comes up with this prometheus.io slash probe true annotation, it'll be discovered and probed. Um, and then we have an example of a service and an ingress as well. And the ingress has an extra annotation that uh, looks for which is probe scheme, because we need to know if it's uh, if we're supposed to try to hit it through SSL or not, and because that determines whether it would be successful or a failure. Uh, so now we're going to get into the actual configs that we're using uh, for each of these in our service running right now. So this would handle the pods. Um, we've named our module something else, just generic HTTP yet that was something we wanted. Um, we look for the pod role. Uh, back down, down, then down in the relabel configs is where that annotation comes in. So this is Kubernetes uh, metadata from the Kubernetes API uh, provides these annotations and, and then Prometheus can act on them. So we look for that, um, we, we say we're looking for a regex of true. So as long as that value is true, we're gonna keep, uh, we're gonna keep these and, and that it will result in it being probed. Um, and then the rest is uh, some source relabel, source labels and target labels relabeling happening uh, similar to the previous example. Um, and then it actually takes labels that you've added to your um, pod in this case and puts them into a label map, which can be helpful in your Kubernetes metrics. Um, so the service probe is very similar, except that it's looking for the service role. Um, it's looking for the slightly different, uh, or it's looking for the, yeah, it's a service annotation in this case. Um, and the rest is pretty much identical to the previous. Then the ingress level, uh, this one gets a bit more involved. Um, we're looking for that uh, probe scheme annotation this time. Uh, we're seeing if it matches our regex because we know we can only support HTTP and HTTPS. Um, and then the, the API uh, for an ingress doesn't give you back a simple, um, you know, protocol colon slash slash uh, address port. Uh, you have to kind of assemble that yourself. So that's what's happening about halfway down. And, and then the rest is very similar to the previous few slides. So how about we take a look at a demo, how this actually works. So, uh, I have this config um, for a deployment. I also have um, in, in the same config an ingress and a uh, service definition, which all of which have the annotation I've been talking about, the, the Prometheus IO probe true. So this is running right now. I deployed it earlier today. Uh, it's just a sample deployment uh, or application I found. I think it's in Node. So I have this up now and I have two, it's running on two pods. So I think if I refresh this, I'll potentially see the other pod. Um, maybe, maybe, there we go. So uh, what we had to do then, um, so now the probes, the probes are happening through Prometheus, right? Um, so how do we get that visible to our teams? The Blackbox project, or sorry, the if you search the Grafana dashboard um, resource, the, the the there's a there's a whole bunch of Grafana dashboards that you can search on the Grafana site, and one uh, for Blackbox uh, I just found and adapted for this 
project. And so I have um, dashboards for ingress, service, and pods. So here's the ingress for uh, what I was just sharing, that application. So I can select my namespace and I can select um, the, 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 the necessary ingress. And I can see all this information that uh, very similar to what I would get from Datadog Synthetics. Uh, as far as latency and status codes and status and all the kind of inf important information I need. So this I could get from Datadog um, if I had it, if I want, it would be, you know, something I'd have to just hard code into uh, their service to say, hey, I want you to hit this address at, you know, whatever desired interval and anything else I cared about. Um, I could never hit the services uh, from within Kubernetes as we can with um, this service with Prometheus and Blackbox. So here's a different um, dashboard uh, for the services. So here, same, I, have, I can select my namespace and I can select my uh, service. And this is all from within the cluster itself. So the latencies are slightly different. So out here, ooh, we just had a, uh, a high one, I wonder why. Um, Ingress, ingress level, service level, and all the way down to the pod level. So um, if you had a specific pod that was acting up, uh, or if maybe you had a canary deployment, uh, this would be an excellent way to find it, where um, I really don't think you'd be able to do that easily with uh, an external service. So that is what this looks like. So this is um, all teams have to do to then use this service is add that annotation, um, deploy their stuff and find their, uh, whatever they care about, be it, be it at the ingress level, service level or pod level um, from within one of these dashboards. And they didn't have to write um, any of that themselves. They just got to use what was there. And this has been really We've gotten very good feedback from the few teams that have been trying this lately. Um, so a little bit of a summary of how we see us versus Datadog. Um, our probes can get much closer than Datadog. So I put an asterisk here because Datadog does provide an agent that I know you can put in your Kubernetes cluster and I believe we'll give you all kinds of useful information about your deployments and um, hit your API servers, your etcd servers. Uh, and yeah, it'll give you a lot of cluster information. I don't know how much it costs. <laughs> I'm sure it's also not cheap. Uh, and as far as I can tell, you can't use that capability to then hit internal endpoints. Um, so maybe anyone more familiar could uh, set me straight on that. But as far as I know, it's not possible. Uh, so the big one of the big things for us is that we scrape twice as often as Datadog can scrape. Uh, they are at a, a minute is the lowest you can go. We feel the 30 seconds, you know, a lot can happen in a minute with your service. Um, we feel that 30 seconds is much better and really the minimum. And we could even go below that if we have um, a need for it. If we have teams that are interested in going down to like 15 seconds, even we could do that. Um, I did mention before that you can get very complex with your black box configs. So the with your black box modules. So you're handing off your authentication, you know, whatever it means for your probe to be successful, that all has to happen within black box itself. Um, if you have tokens, if you have you know basic authentication, you know, all these things that teams might want to specify at the moment we don't support but we have been coming up with a way that uh, we think will, will work so that they can uh, manage their own modules essentially. So, and again, we feel this has been very low cost. Um, there, I think I had a look at uh, our estimate for our entire production Kubernetes cluster, or sorry, um, our entire Kubernetes namespace for our team runs, you know, probably a dozen or so deployments and it's something like $12 a month uh, for, for us to run just after everything. So black box is much cheaper than that. So granted though, um, Prometheus itself is not 
uh, very cheap. <laughs> if we, there's a significant expense to running uh, our Prometheus cluster, um, which is, you know, it's a cost that we're expecting to have anyway. And then just adding this on top of it is you know, not minimal cost addition. So a um, few things that we know we might want to look into as improvements in the future, uh, where I was sharing three different dashboards, um, that doesn't really give you a good uh, view into your the whole picture of your application. Having to switch between isn't a great experience, so I'd like to find a way to give a single pane of glass um, in a single dashboard somehow. So uh, where I mentioned that we want to support uh, customizations to modules in uh, Blackbox, that's, uh, that's a big thing the teams are going to need. So we want to we basically want to support any any kind of feature that you can um, do through Blackbox. We want to be able to support. Uh, so the other big thing that we don't support right now is multi-region or multi you know uh, origin endpoint. We don't we can't hit your uh, service from around the world uh, at your desired origin points uh, like Datadog can. So one of the ways we have been looking into that is um, this project from um, GitHub user Discordian Fish, which he, he took um, Blackbox and put it into a Lambda function. Uh, it hasn't had any activity over a couple of years, but it was really interesting to us as a potential way to support Blackbox uh, in other regions without having to bring up a lot of infrastructure because Lambda, we use Lambda a lot and it's very nice to deal with it's, um, you know, without having the extra overhead of running infrastructure. So that may be something we use or adopt or improve on and since the project seems to be a bit stale. Um, and then uh, something that I think is strange um, and I can't find any examples of it is there's no, or there doesn't seem to be a way to s support authentication between Blackbox, sorry, between Prometheus and Blackbox. So um, if you can hit Blackbox and if there's something sensitive, like if you have a module with some authentication within it, um, essentially anyone can hit your service through Blackbox and be authenticated. Um, so that doesn't sit too well with me. I'd really like to find a way to um, generate a token or something and have Prometheus use that to talk to Blackbox so that nothing else could come potentially come in and start uh, hitting things it shouldn't be able to. Um, one team came to us recently and asked for the ability to support custom paths. They'd rather not hit, uh, you know, whatever the path is defined in Kubernetes. They want to hit maybe slash black box or something, some other endpoint so that they, uh, our activity doesn't show up in their logs. That's something that we want to support. Um, and something I think is interesting that I've played around a little bit, but I, I don't know if it's that useful is probing the ingress controller, controller itself. So we use the Nginx ingress controller. Um, and I feel like that could potentially uh, provide some uh, clues when there are problems potentially. If maybe there's a problem in the ingress controller itself, you'd be able to find it if you were probing it. Uh, and that brings us to the end of what I have. Um, Meltwater uh, Engineering, we have a official blog at underthehood.meltwater.com. Uh, and we have an official uh, Twitter account at Meltwater ENG if you're interested in following uh, along with anything that we're up to. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, James. That was really great. Indeed, now it's time for questions. So I hope you guys have prepared your questions. And so we are ready for you. Uh, feel free to unmute yourselves uh, if you want to ask your question directly to Jim. Uh, or if you're uh, a bit shy, you can also use the chat. Um, the, the space is yours, people. I actually would have one question, Jim. Um, really great that this can be done, right? These basically these you know, pings from within Kubernetes on these individual endpoints and scrapping the data. Now you you keep mentioning that obviously this is much cheaper to run than a comparable SaaS service that is doing synthetic tests. You're using Datadog. Are you also? I mean, have you thought? Of, I assume your organization is still using Datadog for other monitoring things. Right? Are you? Yes. Think, are you thinking about combining that data because eventually you end up with 
don't you end up with two data silos? Yes. Uh, so Grafana, this is a little background where we looked into getting data. So we like Grafana being our uh, single, I used the word pane of, the, the term pane of glass. Grafana is our pane of glass. We want to have everything in Grafana whenever possible. Um, so Datadog, um, there is a uh, data source for the enterprise Grafana for Datadog. Uh, Enter enterprise Grafana is also very expensive, we found. And there is apparently a open source um, plugin, I think, for Grafana that will also give you Datadog metrics. So we have uh, in our Grafana, um, we have added that. So if you have data in Datadog, you can see it in Grafana. Um, and, and you know, for the few teams that have asked for that, it seems to be working fine. Um, so I you know, feel a little bad that you know, we're not paying Grafana for that capability, but um, it seems to work okay for our needs. But yeah, we, it, it, the more you have data in, in disparate places, uh, the, um, the more complicated things can get. One, one follow-up question. Do you also have alerts defined? So will then uh, engineers automatically get pinged in case there's something wrong? Or how does that work? Yeah. So black box uh, doesn't support that on its own. Um, there, Prometheus has alert manager built into it, which I'm sure you could use to uh, define rules that would result in alerts. Um, where we do most of our alerts these days is in Grafana. So um, yeah, we find that to be the most flexible and, and, and supports like pretty much any use case we can think of. We're, we try to get everything you know, visible in Grafana. I mean, ideally everything also comes from Prometheus. We have some other metric services, but Prometheus has been our you know, favorite by far. And um, yeah, so we will we'll define our alerts uh, in individual Grafana panels, which has been really, worked really well for us. If anyone's interested in the uh, JSON for the dashboards I shared, let me know either in the meetup post or Twitter or wherever. Um, I'll see if I can get them. I'll get the slides for this and put them in the meetup post for sure. <laughs> 